Welcome to Summer of Scripture on the Naked Marriage Podcast. For 66 days in a row, we're releasing a short daily devotional for your marriage. Over these 66 days, we'll be sharing one scripture from each of the 66 books of the Bible and talking about how it applies to your life and marriage. Listen to all 66 episodes of these and you'll have a better understanding of God's Word and His perfect plan for your marriage. Let's dive in to today's scripture. Hey friends, welcome to episode 60 in Summer of Scripture. We're in the book of 1 Peter today. Peter was an apostle, a disciple of Jesus Christ, one of the 12 core followers that Jesus handpicked, and then tapped as a special leader even among that group of 12. He was a great leader in the early church, uh, ultimately died as a martyr, um, and when they killed him, they crucified him, but because he felt so unworthy to die in the same way Jesus had died, he asked to be crucified upside down. Yeah. which uh, they they did. They granted that request. And so Peter was, was crucified upside down because he didn't feel worthy to die in the same way as Jesus. He had a lot of great stuff to say in the, the two books that bear his name in the Bible. And today in 1 Peter, our verses, chapter 3, verse 7, it says this, In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives. Treat your wife with understanding as you live together. She may be physically weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. Treat her as you should, so your prayers will not be hindered. And it's a beautiful challenge to husbands specifically. He's talk, he talks to wives as well about the importance of respecting your husband, honoring your husband. But just a word to husbands here for a second. Uh, I, I don't know of anywhere else in the scripture where it gives something specific that can hinder your prayers if you're not careful about it. Like oh, yeah. when you when you don't do this, or when you do this, it'll actually kind of cause a blocker for your your prayers even getting through. And if you're yeah. cruel to your wife, insensitive to your wife, disrespectful to your wife, it not only harms your marriage. Peter's saying it it sabotages your prayer life. Yeah, God God's not going to want to hear from a guy that's not being good to his wife because we're called to love our wives the way Jesus loves His church, where He gave His life for her. Yeah. It is a high calling. And we've seen where in in some situations, you know, there's other verses that talks about submission. I mean, that's, I I think where many people kind of misunderstand what that is. You know, it talks about how first we are called to mutually submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And then it says, husbands submit to your, your wife. I'm sorry. Wives submit to your husbands and, um, and and basically to respect their husbands. And then it talks about, you know, the husband loving the wife as Christ loved the church, being willing to lay down his life for her. And I've seen husbands, though, really cling to the, the verses about the wives and their submission to them and then like totally ignoring this other part of it. And I think that, you know, maybe, maybe the people that he was talking to had the same kind of predicament where these husbands were really understanding this whole like submission thing that their wives are called to submit to them and really like reminding their wives of this, like, you're supposed to submit to me. I'm supposed to be the leader of this house, but then them not showing them love and respect and honor at all. And really, you know, that can be emotionally abusive. And we've actually in today's, you know, time, we, we know people who have, who have divorced over this because the husband was like a just hard lined, um, you know, would, would use, like would hold those verses of submission over his wife's head, but then not at all pay attention to what he's called to do. And really what a husband is called to do is an even, even like yeah. harder and higher calling. You're loving like Christ where it is selfless. You're, you're sacrificing your life. You're meeting right. these, you're washing feet and ultimately giving your life you're for someone else. You're willing to give else. your life, yeah. And that's the standard. I mean, guys, we've got a lot to live up to before before we start pointing the finger and saying, you need to do more of this or that. Right. And I mean, we're both called, we have different distinct roles and we could get into whole podcast episodes about that, which we have. But I think that it really, what it boils down to is we both, we both have a high calling that we're called to in marriage. And, and really we're both called to love, honor, and respect each other. And I I love how it really emphasizes this because I do think that certain, there are certain men uh, and, and women can do the very same thing with misunderstanding their role as well. But we're talking about husbands today, so I'm just going to talk about that. There are certain men out there that maybe in the way that they're wired, they really just, you know, they want they want the authority, okay? And God does give them a certain, you know, level of leadership and a calling of leadership on their life in marriage, but it's out of love and it's out of and honor and it's out of protection and, and respect. Leadership within the body of Christ, within the kingdom of God. And he says like, 
Gentiles, meaning like it, in that context, yeah. unchristians, they use authority as a way to like control others, Manipulate. lord it over others. Yeah. He said, but with us, the greatest among you must be your, be a servant. Yeah. And so leadership within a marriage and within really Christianity as a whole is is defined by servanthood. It's right. defined by being the first one to to go to serve the needs of another and to protect. Right. And as husbands, we have a unique calling to serve and to protect. And that's right. what leadership really should look like. Mm-hmm. And the wife has a unique role to to help lift us up as we do that. Right. Um, but it's saying I believe in you. Yeah. I mean, that's a big part of it is like, and not that we have no leadership role to play at all. I mean, you know, most decisions, obviously, like nearly all of them, we want, we want to decide together and stuff, but there is more of a burden placed on the husband yeah. and more of a, a responsibility and, um, and he'll be held to that responsibility, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that with these verses in particular, it's saying like, don't use this, uh, to, to be, um, you know, to kind of have something over your wife, use this, you know, be a leader who honors your wife, because if you're going to lord this over her and not, not have a sacrificial kind of leadership, like you're, you're not getting the ear of God. Yeah. That is like, that's in your face. That is, that is in your face. That's bold guys. That's a wake up call. It should be for all of us. Love your wife. Well, there's so many reasons to do it. Mm -hmm. And there's one more because, because, because God does not tolerate right. a man. Don't be manipulative. Who's going to be, be rude a bully. to his wife. Yeah. Love her well. Exactly. I love you so much. I love you so much. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Join us tomorrow. Day 61 will be in the book of Second Peter.